All right. Um, sorry, I thought that it would only be about 15 minutes, um, but hopefully this won't be too much longer here on these last few. So let's go ahead and continue looking at um, differentiability and continuity. Um, and it does change a little bit. Otherwise, um, you know, we'd be, uh, we'd be done, but it does change a little. So let's look at uh, 7 and 8 here. Okay, it says find A and B such that the function is differentiable everywhere. Okay, well, again, in order to be differentiable, the graph has to be continuous. And again, the area of concern for us here is at the break at x equals 2. Um, a cubic by itself and a quadratic by itself is going to be um, differentiable, which implies continuity. Uh, it's going to be differentiable everywhere. Uh, it does imply continuity, but we need to at least kind of uh, work with that and, and check that and make sure that um, we are making this graph continuous, first of all. All right, so to find A and B, where our approach is going to be to look at continuity and differentiability, even though nothing was said about continuity here. So um, let's look at continuity. Ah, not again. At x equals 2. All right, so the functional value at 2, okay, when I plug in 2, 2 belongs to this top piece. When I plug in 2 wherever I see x, I'm going to have um, 2 cubed 8, 8a. Okay, so my functional value is going to be 8a, whatever a, uh, a is. Okay, let's look at um, the left limit and the right limit. Okay, so as I approach 2 from the left, I'm on the a x cubed, so I guess I get 8a. All right, let's look at the right limit. Uh, approaching 2 from the right, everywhere I see x, I'm going to plug that in here. That's going to be 4 plus b. Okay, and now from this, for the limit to exist, then I do know that the limit as x approaches 2 would exist um, if 8a equals 4 plus b. Uh, and that's as far as I can go and, and take this. I mean, the third part of the continuity test just has me set 8a equal to this limit, so it would be looks like me saying 8a equals 8a equals 4 minus b. So I'm, I'm finished here. I can't do anything with um, continuity. But at least I got an equation with uh, two variables in it, two unknowns. Okay, So let's go on to differentiability. <coughs> Okay, if I approach 2 from the left and I'm talking about differentiability, I need the slope. Well, the derivative of ax cubed, um, that's going to be your power rule. So let's bring the 3 in front. I'm going to have 3a, keep the base of x, reduce the exponent to 2. Now, everywhere you see x, replace it with 2. So I'm going to square it. I'll get 4. 4 times 3 is 12. All right, so the left slope is 12a. Let's find the right slope. Uh, approach 2 from the right. This piece, what's this derivative? Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x. Uh, b is going to be a constant. And I probably should have said that up here. b is a constant. So that derivative is 0. So the derivative of this um, function is just going to be 2x. All right, everywhere we see x, plug in 2. So I'm going to get 4. OK. Well, in order for it to be differentiable, these two slopes must equal. So easy enough, 12a must equal 4. a must equal 4 twelfths, or 1 third. So right there I have at least one of the values. And as you guys can see, um, we can plug back in here 1 third for a and solve. I'm going to come up here. 8 times a third equals 4 minus b. And just continuing to solve, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring b over to the other side, negative b over to the other side, that would be positive b. I'll keep the 4 here, and I'll subtract this product of 8 thirds. So uh, finishing the calculations here, getting a common denominator, this would be 12 thirds. Um, b is going to be actually um, 4 thirds. Uh, Uh, 
Okay, so I knew there was a mistake. Let me come back over here. Yikes. All right, the mistake was right here, 8a equals 4 plus b. All right, and that's going to take place again up here. And so that's going to be b is equal to, these two should be switched here. And I could erase that, but I think it's easier just to do this. <laughs> All right, so 8 thirds, back up here, minus 4 equals b. There we go. I thought I remembered b was negative. So uh, this would be 8 thirds minus 12 thirds or negative 4 thirds. There we go. Sorry about that. I don't know if I just set it over here and it didn't write it. Kind of like what's happened here. But it takes it away. But yeah, indeed. So B is equal to negative 4 thirds. Okay. Ugh. Okay, let's practice one more of those. All right, we're trying to figure out uh, values for A and B such that the function is differentiable everywhere. And again, we're going to start with the idea of continuity. All right, so for example, 8, the functional value is 0. Everywhere you see x, replace it with 0, so the functional value is just b. All right, as x approaches 0 from the left, we're on cosine, oh goodness, of x. So cosine of 0 is 1. Oh goodness. The right-hand limit functional value is uh, everywhere you see x, replace it with 0. That term goes to 0. We have b. So ax plus b. Replace 0 in there. We just get b. All right. So setting left equal to right limit, we're going to see that b must equal 1. So that was kind of nice and convenient. b has to equal 1. And perhaps from differentiability, we'll be able to get A's value. So differentiability at x equals 0. Hopefully your stuff's not erasing too. Okay. Approaching 0 from the left, let's find the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. We're going to evaluate at 0, so negative sine of 0 is 0. Okay, let's approach 0 from the right here. Let's find the derivative, because this is a slope. Uh, derivative here is going to be a, because the constant b goes to 0. The derivative of ax is just a. So I'm going to put the derivatives here, and so this limit is a. All right, so for the graph to be differentiable, left slope equals right slope. So from here, nice enough, a must equal 0. So I found my two values, um, one from continuity and one from differentiability. Okay. All right, and now our final example here, um, it kind of changes a little bit. Look at the question. Where is f differentiable? Use interval notation. All right, just looking at each piece by themselves, they're going to be nice, smooth, continuous curves. Uh, quite possibly the only place that it might not be differentiable is going to be at the break at x equals 1. Uh, before I even find out if it's differentiable, uh, I need to check continuity. If it's not continuous, it's not differentiable. So let's do continuity first. Um, we can um, look at the three-part continuity test if you want to uh, to determine if it's continuous. Um, you don't have this example on your notes. Uh, you might want to just turn your paper over and do the problem on the back. All right, uh, the functional value at 1, it belongs to the top piece. So 1 cubed, etc. All 
Uh, 1 minus 3 plus 3 is 1. Okay, so we have a functional value. Uh, it's 1. Uh, it's really about the limits now, too. As I approach 1 from the left, I'm on that top. Yeah. Yikes. I'm on that top piece as well. Uh, so I know, again, what the limit is. Based on my previous work up here, if I plug the 1 in, I'm going to get 1. Okay, let's look at the right limit. Okay, uh, everywhere I see x, replace it with 1. So that's 1 minus 2. So that's negative 1. Okay, good. So this tells us the limit does not exist at x equals 1. All right, so from that, that means f is not differentiable at x equals 1. Still haven't answered the question. Um, the question is, where is f differentiable? Well, we know it's differentiable everywhere except for at 1. So using interval notation, we're just going to exclude 1 from all real numbers. A little bit different type of question, so make sure you're, you know, you're answering the question. Okay, that's it. That's continuity and differentiability. Thanks for being patient.